In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use and customize the WP Baker Page Builder Media Masonry Grid. And it's really quite cool. There's a lot of cool features and effects you can apply to media as it appears on the page. This is part of the WP Baker Page Builder playlist. You can get to that through a link in the description or through the card above. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, and you like WordPress tutorials and tips and tricks, click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like deals, check out the half off hosting deal I negotiated for you with Inmotion Hosting. Nearly every plan is half off, some are less, but every plan has a discount that you could use for yourself or for your clients or whatever. Feel free to go check that out in the link down below or the card that popped up. And with that out of the way, let's head to this tutorial. To add a masonry grid of images, I'm going to create a new page. You can add these to any pages you already created with the WP Bakery page builder. I'm just going to create a brand new one. If I go into pages and then add new, I'm going to call this masonry grid testing. I click on save draft. Then I'll click on the front end to access the front end editor. Then I'm going to click on add element. And I'm going to find the grid. They're all kind of scattered around here. Here we have uh, the media grid element right here. And there's a masonry media grid right here. So I'm just going to actually just search for grid to reduce our, our uh, the number of items we see. And in the thumbnail itself, it shows us what the difference is between just a regular grid and a masonry grid. For both posts and media are equal in height and width. The masonry grid are equal in width, but the heights vary based on how tall the content is. So if images happen to be taller, if some images are taller than others, they're gonna be misaligned inside the masonry grid and that's what is the appeal of that type of grid. So we're gonna click on masonry media grid to add an image grid that is masonry style. Settings are loading here. This is where it's gonna appear. Here we have some placeholders. They're all the same size right now because the placeholders are all the same size. But as soon as you start adding images, by clicking on the plus image, I'm going to add a whole bunch just to make sure I've got a bunch that are different sizes. So I'm just going to add all of these, except for this one. That one's really big. And this one, it's really small. So I'm going to add all those images. Click on add images. You can upload them if you want as well. I'm just going to take them right from the media library in this case. And then once they're added, this dialog box will close. Now we have all the images in here. If you want to remove one, just click on the little X above the image to take it out. If you want to add more, click on the plus to add more images. And this area here will update live once we click save. So I'm just going to click save right now that we have some more images in there. And we can tweak the design a little bit further. Now we can change a bunch of the settings regarding these images. So we have our display style. We can show them all, or we can have a load more button if there's a whole lot of images, or we can have lazy loading, which means they load as the person scrolls down the page. Both load more and lazy loading are better for page load time. So if you have a lot of images, pick one of those two to make sure that you don't have a thousand images, for example, loaded all at once. Have them loaded as the person wants to see them. You can change how many items per row. I like the three. If you put it to six, it's a little scrunched up in my opinion. It depends on your image or, or the images that you're using. But for my images here, if we click, if we choose six and click on save, this will update to having six columns and I think it's a little scrunched. It's actually not that bad. If we had these more images of people like this, it might not be that bad having six, but I prefer to have three, makes them bigger, nicer to look at. You can adjust the gap between the images to any one of these options. I like the five pixels. The gap is just the, the white space between them. You can add an element ID and an extra class for more CSS style if you want to do more styling. You can have the images fade in when they load. So let's click on save and see what the fade looks like. And that was, they, they came in from the bottom, they kind of faded into place from the bottom. If you click on item design, you can choose how these things, how these, how these things, how these images appear individually. There's extra styling you can have. So we have masonry media by default here. We want to stick in the masonry media options because we added the masonry media grid. We don't want to go and start the, the basic grid options because the plugin may get confused. So let's do a solid blur out and save changes. And now when we hover over images, 
we're gonna have a little effect. So as you can see, when we hover over them, they blur out. There's a magnifying glass that appears that allows us to preview a bigger image if we click on it. It's not bigger actually, but it opens up in the pretty photo add-on. And then we can add or use a different one, maybe a, uh, let's see, scale with content block. Let's see what that does. Hover over the image and it scales up a little bit. And it also adds the title of the image down below. I haven't customized these titles, so it just has the file name. But that's a pretty cool effect. So go through these options, pick the one that you like for your circumstance, and enjoy a really cool effect without any fancy coding. The design options, this is the same design option panel as for every WP Bakery page builder element. You can add margins, border, padding. This is not between images. This is for the overall masonry grid media element. You can add a border around the whole thing. You can add a border raised to the border. You can add a background image. Once you have your settings done how you like them, you can even squash all this stuff into a smaller row. If you go to row here, click on the little arrow, click on the hamburger icon. If you want it to be half a page, for example, click on this icon, it goes half and half. You can have any ratio you want in here, any fractions you want, as long as they equal one, you can have any ones you want, and that puts it into half the page. Looks a little silly with the, the titles down below, so I'm just gonna change that to make it a little bit prettier. I like that solid blur out effect. I'm gonna save changes. Now we have a solid blur out and we have a media grid. If you wanna move it to the other column, hover over the title, media base or masonry media grid, drag and drop it over. Now it's in this column. Super simple. Now that you have all this set up how you want it, make sure you click save draft or publish or update, depending on your circumstance, because all these changes are just saved in the browser. They're not actually saved to the page until you click these buttons up here. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, you might have wasted a lot of your time by not having your work saved. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off for hosting deal in the description down below and possibly in the card that popped up if I had any remaining cards. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.